So in this video, we're going to be learning how to actually upload files to upload care from our website. So the first thing we're going to do whenever we log in is we're going to have our photo feed. So to get the photo feed, what we want to do is go to our URLs and we're going to rename this one from index. We're just going to call it home and inside views instead of index, we're going to have home. So I'm just going to paste this method in here and then I'll explain it. So the first thing we're doing is we're checking if the user's logged in. That's what this request.user is authenticated does. And if the user is logged in, we want to retrieve their details. So we do that by querying the database based off the username of whoever's logged in and we retrieve the one row that's returned. Then what we do is we, is we assign a profile photo and then we just have our contacts like usual. So we're gonna have a variable on the page called user, which is gonna be all of the user's information, such as their ID, their username, their profile pic. And then we're gonna render a logged in version of the index page. Otherwise, we're just gonna render the regular index page that we've already been doing. So we're gonna have a version of the index page for when you're logged in. While we're on the profile pic, we're gonna create a new column in the database for our profile picture. So I'm just gonna paste in this new field for the profile picture. It's just gonna be a text field and a map with the maximum length of 255 and by default it's going to be empty. We're just also going to put in is authenticated up here because we're using a custom user model so we have to have this is authenticated and once again we just migrate that. So in our templates I'm just going to paste in this template and I'm going to open it up. So it's much the same as before so now we're going to try to log in but before we can do that we have to go to settings and we have to add what Django calls an authentication backend. This is just something we have to do once because we're not using the default user model and then we have to just create our authentication backend and, and this is it here. We only have to do this once. So after we've done that we should be able to log in. So if I refresh so now once we've done that we're able to log in and you can see here is our photo feed without any photos. So what we want to do is start uploading photos. So if I click on this upload button Button. So here's our image uploader and here's how it works. Here is the code for uploading images. These first two chunks just deal with making the image uploader appear and disappear. And then what we do is we provide our public key. That's the only field that is absolutely required. Then we can tell UploadCar to only upload images because UploadCar can upload all sorts of different files. It can upload PDFs and all sorts. So we only want to allow uploads of images. And this system dialog just means that whenever we click upload, a dialog will slide down from the top of the page and we can pick a file on our computer rather than UploadCar's dialog where we can drag files in. It's up to you, you can turn that on or off. The preview URL is the string that we manipulate whenever we're adding effects to images. And the current rotation just tells us the current rotation of the image. The base URL is the URL of the photo when it gets uploaded to upload car without any effects. So we're storing both the base URL and the URL with upload cars on the fly effects added to it. And this is just how we decide if it's a profile photo or not. So this function was actually taken just from the upload car website. And what it does is the widget will display the photo you just uploaded. It's on the upload car website. I'll include a link in the description of the video. And what I've done to customize it is I check when the file is finished uploading. I figure out the size of the file in terms of its dimensions. Then what we do is we set the preview URL equal to the URL we got from upload car and the base URL equal to the preview URL. At this point, there's no effects on the image. Next what we do is we show the image by just creating a new image element on the page and we set the source equal to the preview URL which is the URL that can have effects on it and we update the height and width of the container to match that of the image. Then what we do is we scroll down and we go through all of the effects and whenever we click on an effect we, we set that effect with this get effect method. We check if it's a JPEG because, because the invert effect doesn't work on PNGs so we want to check if it's a JPEG so that we can invert the image and then after we've added the effect we just update the preview image URL. This code is just for updating profile photos and whenever the upload button is clicked that's when we send an Ajax request to our server to store the image in the database and and refresh the page and we did the same if it's a profile photo as well. This is more code from the upload car website. I'll include the link in the description but this get effect method is the is the method we use for adding effects to images. So all we do is we go to the preview URL and we add for example grayscale or we add the invert effect just like we saw in video number two when we looked at the upload car API and how it works. And then we scroll down some more and we can and then the way we rotate an image is when we click rotate we update the current rotation and then we update the image with upload cars rotate effect and we rotate the image by whatever this current rotation number is. So now we're on the logged in index page. That's the page with the photo feed. And what we have to do is we include the upload car widget. Then we include our uploading script. And that's all we have to do 
to actually upload images. And the rest of this is for displaying images and we'll learn about that in a later video. But for uploading images, that's all we need. But before it'll work, we have to, to create a table in our database, obviously to store those images. So in models, I'm gonna create a brand new model, call it photo, and we have a base URL, the, the URL with the effects, the date it was uploaded, the owner of the image, how many likes it has, what the caption of the image is, the number of tags the image has, and what a tag is, is it's just whenever we detect a face in the photo, upload car has face detection built in. So whenever we detect a face, we can increase number of tags in the photo because people can tag people if there's a face in a photo. Then we have the main color of the image and we just store that. So of course we migrate that. Now what we'll do is we'll just add this new URL for saving photos. It's called Ajax Save Photo. This is how we upload an image and it goes to the view Ajax Save Photo. So back on views, I'm just going to paste this in here. Ajax save photo and it's a very simple one. It's just a regular Ajax request. The majority of the code, the validation and such goes in Ajax save photo in forms. So to upload a photo, we have to have the URL, the base URL and the caption. That's what we send in the post request and the URL is the link with the effects added into it and the base URL is obviously the one without any effects. And the first thing we do is we check the request came from a logged in user. Then what we do is we check the length of the caption and then what we do is we make sure that the URL of the image starts with upload cars CDN because we don't want people to be able to send fake requests to the server putting in URLs that aren't uploaded to upload car and we do the same thing for base URL as well. Then what we do is we send a request off to upload car to retrieve the main colors out of the image. We already looked at this in the second video. Then what we do is we get the results and we pick one of the colors at random. You can see here's where we do that and we store it in this main color variable and then we just insert the photo into the database just like we do when we create a user and we save the photo. So if I save that, and then finally to upload a photo, we just send an Ajax request off. Here's our post request. Here's the data in the post request. And that's all we have to do. We don't have to do anything fancy with the images because upload car takes care of that for us. And on our forms, don't forget we have to import our new model, which is called photo. So now if we refresh that, we're going to try to upload an image. So here's the image we're going to upload. And what I'm going to do is just drag this on here. So that's been uploaded to upload care. When I refresh the page, you can see now there's the new file that's been stored. I can add a caption to the photo. I can just say, hello world. I can add a filter. I could invert it. I could blur it. I could flip it. I'll just make it gray and I could rotate it if I want. So I've rotated it upside down. I'm going to click save photo. You can see the page refreshed. Nothing happened because we're not loading photos yet. But if I go to SQL Pro and I refresh, we have our new table called photo. And there is the image we just uploaded to upload car. You can see it's already figured out the main photo, the caption, the upload date, the URL and the base URL. So base URL has no effects on it. And the regular URL that we show to users is the URL with our effect, which is grayscale and our rotation of 180 degrees. So that's it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, favorite and subscribe. So in the next video, we're going to be doing our photo feed and making the photos show up properly. But that's it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, favorite and subscribe. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Reddit. Also, don't forget there's a link to upload car in the description so you can set up your free account and get started straight away. But that's it for this video and I'll see you next time.